I would now like to bring out Swetha and Morgan from IBM and the Hyperledger Foundation to show you their demo. How is everyone doing? Having a good start to their trouble con weekend? So Morgan's getting mic'd up over there, but I'll get us started. Um, thanks, Tim, for introducing us. Um, I'm Swetha, this is Morgan. We're from IBM and we work on the one of the open source teams there and we work on Hyperledger Fabric specifically. Uh, oh, that's us. <laughs> So I'm here to kind of talk about Truffle and Hyperledger, and Tim kind of told you guys what we're about to show you. But let's start off with the Ethereum world, because I feel like most people who use Truffle are probably more familiar with this world. Um, typically, this is how I see it. Remember, I'm coming from a fabric perspective, so if I'm a little bit off or wrong, you know, give me a little bit of a break there. Um, we started off, you take a node, get node, or whichever one you prefer, uh, typically, once you've decided that you're going to use an Ethereum network, you're going to get that node, start it running, and then connect it up to your choice of network. Now, this could be mainnet, testnet, maybe you have a different <coughs> Ethereum private network going on. But typically, this is what's happening. And then what happens is you have this whole suite of tools that you can use to develop your smart contracts, create web applications, it really is a nice kind of a developer experience. Um, so coming from a Fabric perspective, we saw this, we liked what we were seeing, and so a couple years ago we said, how do we enable those developers to use the things that they've already created for Ethereum, but let's use it on Hyperledger Fabric. Now how do we do this? <laughs> now before I get into how we did this, I wanna talk a little bit about Hyperledger Fabric. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Hyperledger, it is an open source foundation that houses different blockchain technologies. Um, Fabric is one of the ones there. I'm not gonna go through each of the projects up there, but the two that I think most people, or I wanna kind of draw your attention to are the ones on the top row on the left-hand side. So Hyperledger Burrow and Hyperledger Fabric. Uh, Burrow is a EVM, smart contract runtime based blockchain platform. So they have their own implementation of the EVM spec, they use Tenderman as their consensus, and they're their own blockchain platform. Now why this is important, you'll find out in a little bit. The next one over there is Hyperledger Fabric. Now this is a permission blockchain platform. And Fabric was designed with businesses in mind. The idea is building upon business networks and relationships that already exist and making those more efficient. Now, with that design decision in behind Fabric, there are assumptions and choices that have been made in Fabric. So that's very different from Ethereum, and to be honest, I think it's very different from most permission blockchain networks out there as well. Um, so the first thing is Fabric is permissioned. Permissioned in many senses. So it, there's permissioning on who's allowed to run a node, who's allowed to install a smart contract, who's allowed to run a transaction, and who's allowed to see data. There's a lot of options there and a lot of flexibility. The other thing is, again, with more flexibility, we also try to make it modular. So if there are consensus algorithms that you prefer, per, um, prefer, you can bring that to the network. You can also use some of the options that we've given you. Um, we have options for the ledger so that we have a backing database that keeps track of the world state. This is separate from just the normal blockchain ledger. And then we also have different ways to manage identity. And you, again, you can bring your own to the network if that's what you prefer. So there is a lot of customizability and it's meant to be agnostic to the use case. So that's what Fabric was designed for. Now the other thing is smart contracts out of the box in Fabric are in general purpose languages. So that means you can use Go, you can use Node, and you can use Java. So if you want to write smart contracts in those languages, we've already given you support out of the box. Then privacy. We noticed that privacy was very important to a lot of these enterprises, and we mean privacy in a few different ways. Now one, I kind of covered it in the permissioning, where who gets access to the data, who's allowed to see things. So we have privacy in terms of that, but we also have something called private data objects, and that's kind of like off-chain data 
uh, meant for your smart contracts. Um, we don't have a token, we don't have the concept of mining, and we don't need a token for consensus. So that's currently how Fabric works. And then the last thing, this is slightly different from a lot of the blockchain networks that I'm familiar with. Most um, Fabric, the way it does consensus is it executes transactions first, orders them, and then validates them. And I think typical blockchains usually order transactions and then um, execute them. So there is a slight difference there. And that does affect the way uh, consensus happens and how your transactions are made. So let's go back to the original problem on hand. We said we want to enable developers who are used to using the Ethereum tools. We want to enable them so that way they can now connect to the Fabric network, but they can reuse those contracts that they've already created and reuse those applications that they've already created. But there's a few problems here. First of all, I just mentioned Fabric doesn't understand what an EVM is. It doesn't know how to run an EVM smart contract. And GET, GET certainly cannot connect to a Fabric network. So those are two kind of big problems. We'll start with the first one. There you go. Um, we'll start with the first one. Well, how do we get Fabric to understand the EVM world? So what we did was I mentioned that Burrow project earlier on. We collaborated with that team and with that project, and we pulled out their EVM. So they have an EVM implementation. We pulled it out as like a little module, and we installed it into our Hyperledger Fabric peer. So now you can install EVM smart contracts, and you can run transactions on them as you would. Um, and all the smart contract and the smart contract data is now living in the Fabric peer ledger. Now, this solves part of the problem because now you can run this stuff. How do you interact with it? Because up to this point, you still have to interact with the Fabric peer as you would interact with the Fabric peer. But we want to use those Ethereum tools that everyone really likes. So we created our own client. We call it Fab3. It's a Web3 provider that allows people to bring their smart contracts and bring their dApps to the Fabric network. Now using this, this is kind of where we got about six, seven months ago. Then I met some of the people here at Truffle and we talked and we said, how do we make this work with Truffle? So I'm excited to say as of yesterday, we just made a new release that now has Truffle support. So now you can use Truffle to interact with the Fabric network and now you can deploy the smart contracts and the applications that you've already developed, and now you can use it against a Fabric one. And with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Morgan to give us a little demo. Yay. Hello, uh, I'm Morgan. Um, so we're hoping that you're familiar with Truffle and that you're familiar with the sort of standard tutorials that you get when you start up, and so the one that we've chosen to basically adapt and run inside of Fabric is the uh, pet shop, and uh, this is the page for it. And so I would like to get started. So again, we have the, the standard sort of uh, concept from Truffle that we're taking, the developer experience. You go, uh, you compile your contracts, you um, make sure they work with the test uh, infrastructure to, to run them and, and execute tests against them and then you finally deploy them and migrate them into um, the production network. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is I want to show you, I want to take you through the, the life cycle we discussed in Ethereum, and then I'll do it in Fabric just to show you that we're getting the same um, output. So I'm going to start a, a sort of development geth node to have uh, the RPC endpoint to talk to, the Web3 endpoint that we've implemented. Um, then we're going to we're gonna first do that. Contracts done. Then we do test. And the test should run. And this is just the standard, we, we've already sort of copied all of the uh, content of the files into the actual files as necessary to get things to run. Um, so you can see all the tests run. And so the last step, of course, is to do the migrate and actually uh, install it into the 
network. You can see that uh, as we've been executing the uh, test part, it did deploy and run transactions uh, on, on the geth node. Um, so we'll do that one part. And so we get the you know normal Ethereum output. You can see again we've we've uh, submitted transactions and mined new blocks. And so the last part of this step is the distributed application, the web app that you can run. Uh, you know you would all run your own copy and get to uh, see the output. So we'll do that. And so we get this beautiful pet shop where you can choose to adopt an animal and success. And so we'll show you that one more time, but again, this is going back to the back end to get, to submit a transaction and execute. Okay, that's the, that's the boring part. Uh, we should all be used to that. So let's do the fabric version. Um, so I've got a fabric network running. This is uh, four nodes, four peers, uh, two different organizations with two peers. Um, and I'm going to start a, I'm going to start Fab3, which is the proxy that uh, we wrote to implement the Web3 API for Truffle to talk to. And it's going to be serving on the same port as, uh, as the Geth node was. So basically we're just swapping out the back end. Um, I'm going to pull up this little client that will show us um, the, you know, the block information of Fabric. Um, and you can see we're starting at blo uh, block height nine, so the next block that we're going to mine is going to be, not mine, but the next block that we're going to get is going to be block nine. Then I will go back, reset, and we'll do truffle. Is it? Should be. Um, but you can see that basically we have the, just the standard configuration to connect to uh, fabric, and then we will do test. And I'll take you through what we're actually doing, but we have the same configuration. One of them is for the geth node, one of them is for the, the fabric network. Um, if you're not familiar with the adoption contract, it's literally just a array of addresses um, with one uh, function to put the messages the sender's address into the specific array location, as well as uh, another function to just look at all the addresses that are in that array. Um, we also have the test, which is three functions to execute these functions and make sure that they, uh, they work. So make sure that you can adopt the pet, get the right ID out of the adopter, make sure that the actual sender's address is in the array. Uh, and then make sure that the get adopters returns all the addresses and that it again it's in the array. And so if we go over here, we get the tests running and executing. And so then our last step is doing the deployment to the final uh, reduction networks. But you can see that we have, again, during this process, we've made a bunch of blocks uh, with the transactions in them. So now we're going to do the migration. The block. So that's going to again install the EVM compiled contracts and get the same truffle output. And then we do the pet shop again. And so now we've got the same application, different instance of it, so you can see we, did, we don't have the adopted pets now, but uh, again we go back and we run the contract, which is going to go into the back and execute the contract, and it works. So we have, uh, these are just the resources if you want to learn more about Fabric. Um, IBM has produced lots of content on uh, <coughs> tutorials, example patterns, uh, blog posts on our developer website. Um, and then this is the actual chain code implementation that we're responsible for this project, uh, uh, Fabric EBM. And I think 
that's it. Thank you. That's our.